Right, uh, in this video, I'm uh, again uh, going to show you a way that I found of uh, mounting pictures. Not in a frame, it's going to be on a, on a, a board. So it's going to be a flat a print on a board. And the, the material that I'm using is, um, is fascia board, you know, plastic guttering. It's the part that goes underneath, they call it the soffit, I think, underneath the uh, guttering on a roof. It's quite cheap to buy. And uh, I think it'll make a nice, uh, a nice surface because I'm going to print the picture on a, on Japanese Kozo paper. And as you've seen in a previous video, I can split the uh, the actual Kozo paper from the backing paper, and then I'm going to wrap it round uh, this um, this plastic uh, guttering. I'll show you how I'm going to size the print in the video. Right, get the saw and get the, get this marked up. My jarring is curled out that good. <laughs> and I've got it cut. That's the board. I'll just sand the edge down and then uh, I'll go on the computer and show you how uh, I'm going to uh, size the actual picture to wrap around this board. So I've got the, uh, the uh, white board uh, cut and sanded at the edges and now what I've done is I've, I've um, glued some mount uh, mounting board uh, it's about three eighths uh, in width all the way around the uh, the board and that's to create an air gap uh, so when I mount the Kozo paper and stretch it underneath there's an air gap and that means that when I spray the print to tighten it up It'll, it will dry without sticking to this, uh, backing, uh, this backing board. So I'll just wait for this to dry now and we'll go on the computer and I'll show you how I'm going to uh, size the print itself. Right, this is the uh, picture that I'm going to print on uh, Kozo paper. I took this uh, picture a few years ago at a place called Ilkley in West Yorkshire and I just love the way the light was uh, coming through the autumn leaves and emphasising the shape of the tree and I, I actually call this uh, uh, print the structure. Now, the board size that I cut was 14 by 9 and 3 quarters. And if I print at that size, it means that, that when I wrap it round the board, that the edges are going to be paper white. So I don't want that. I want, I want the edges to have the print on it. So I need to increase the size of the print. And I've calculated to give me some playroom that uh, it wants to be 15 by 11 inches. Now I'm also going to uh, split tone this print and I'm going to make it so it's cooler in the shadows and warmer in the highlights and I'm going to do all that in uh, this printing software called Image Print. I've used this for years now, it's a fantastic uh, software. It's what they call a RIP processor. In other words, it bypasses my Epson print drivers and everything is done within this, this software. So the first thing I have to do is pick the paper profile which is Epson Japanese Kozo paper. Now I don't think you can buy this paper anymore from Epson but you still can buy the Kozo paper from different manufacturers where you can peel away the print from the backing but I would advise when you do that is always to download their uh, genetic profile so you get a decent uh, uh, screen to print match. Right I've selected the, um, the paper profile now I'm going to pull the image in and I'll see what it uh, looks like when it's centred on the paper. This size of paper is uh, A3 plus which is uh, 13 by 19 inches and we can see the bottom part, uh, this, this is the paper paper the white paper edge is uh, going to wrap round nicely around the back of the board but the sides are a little bit long so I'm going to create a custom size which I'll cut from the roll and we'll call it 13 inches 
by 17. Press OK and then center it. And now we've got an equal border all the way around and that white area is the part that wraps around the back and fastens the print to the board. Now I'll just rotate the image because I need to now just do some soft proofing. This window is a live soft proofing so whatever you see in this window is what you get when you print out. So first of all I want to make the print a little bit darker so I'll go to a colour correction and I'll use the uh, gradation curve and just make the uh, picture a little bit darker and keep the whites nice and bright that looks about right now I'm going to do the split tone so image and a comet picker uh, I've got one that I do use so I'll load that up that's uh, let's have a look uh, split tone cool shadows warm highlights that's the one I want open and that's set all these points and you can see now we've got these uh, cooler uh, shadow areas and these warmer highlights so I'll rotate the image make sure it's center and with all that done now I can uh, press print and then once it's printed out I'll show you it printing out and then I'll show you how I'm going to mount it uh, to the board that I've created so press print and uh, away we go So that's the finished print. As you can see it's got the cooler tones in the shadows and then as it goes into the brighter light it's got these warmer uh, highlights. It just adds a, an extra dimension, more three dimensional look to the image. So we'll get this uh, separated from the backing paper and I'll show you how I'm going to mount it uh, to the board. Right I'm going to now uh, Peel the uh, corso from the backing paper. I've just loosened a, a, a little bit on one corner and now I'm just going to pull the actual uh, corso from the backing paper. I'm always nervous when I'm doing this and thinking it's going to rip but in all honesty it's a very very strong paper is this. You just do it gradually. According to what I've read, Corso paper is uh, one of the, if not the oldest, uh, handmade papers uh, in the world. It's a very old process. So I'm just pulling it slowly. Yeah, we're done. I'll save this uh, backing paper just to tidy up the back of the mount. And that's the actual uh, close up paper with a uh, picture of the tree on it. So the next part, which is going to be a little bit tricky, is to get the board that I made. And I'm going to have to try and align this uh, quite accurately uh, so it goes straight onto this uh, board. Right, I've got uh, one edge at the back stuck down. The reason I've uh, chosen this uh, this white board is because Cozo paper is transparent. So if you shine a, a light through it uh, at, at the print, the, the light will go through it. And with it being a white background, that light will reflect back through the print and it'll just keep it looking nice and bright. If this was a, a black or a dark wood board, uh, the light would be absorbed and the print would look darker. And I don't want that to happen. So 
if you pick up a board uh, I'd just paint it white so the light uh, reflects uh, back through the print right so as I say I've got one edge stuck down at the back I'm using framers tape and now I'm going to do this uh, other long edge it's a bit faffing is this but it pays you just to take your time and So now I've got that tape on, I can actually pull this now. Don't forget when I wet the front of the Corso paper, it'll tighten up. So that's got the bottom and the top done. Now I've got to fold over the, the sides. And I do that uh, this way, just by folding it in on the edge. I keep this corner nice and uh, neat. And pull that tight over. And again, pull it tight. And that's the bitch mounted to the front. And now we've got this airspace here. Uh, and what I'm going to do with this is just wet the print and it'll just tighten up the, uh, the actual Corso paper. And then I'll just... Um, tidy up the back, put some of this uh, white backing on the back and tidy it all up and uh, I'll show you when it's uh, finished. Right that's the uh, back all tidied up, it's right nicely uh, wrapped around the edges. So the next uh, thing to do is spray the actual print with water and uh, let it uh, tighten up. So I'll do that now. Just uh, warm water, air water. Let it drain off. Take the excess off with a bit of tissue. And let that dry. And I'll show you when it's uh, all tightened up. It's looking very nice. So I'll get that dried now. And show you the... Uh, the finished uh, print when it's all tightened up. So this is the finished uh, uh, picture on the Corso paper. Uh, I've wet the paper and you saw me uh, drying it and it's tightened up nicely around the frame between that air gap. As you can see in the picture, I hope you can see it anyway, it's got this lovely cool tone that um, as it slowly goes into the light it gets it gets to a more warmer tone and it just adds that di extra dimension to the image it's a really nice uh, fine art print this and it just shows with uh, just thinking a little bit you know with using different materials how you can mount pictures quite cheaply uh, this was just a bit of a uh, what they call soffit board it's what you buy for plastic guttering i've just cut it down to size and use that as the uh, as the mounting board so as I say, sometimes you've just got to think out of the box and try uh, different things. So I'm going to put this uh, print on eBay for auction. I'll leave a link in the description. Again, if you want to help support the channel, put a bid in. 
it's a really lovely uh, print is this a, a proper what I call a, a fine art print I'll just show you the back of it it's all uh, ready to hang I've got the title on the back and it's signed it's also signed on the the front on the bottom right right hand corner in the uh, video prior to this I uh, was giving away glass uh, frame print and uh, I'm now going to draw the winner out of the hat and uh, and hopefully you've uh, you've got it right was it film or was it d digital uh, let's see see if it was film or digital and uh, see who the winner is right I'm going to do the draw now uh, to the question was it film or was it digital I picked up all the winning answers, printed them off um, um, and put them into this box. So I'm just going to give the box a good mix up and pick out a winner. I won't look. <laughs> Alright, picked one out. And the winner is a Mr Dave Wilkinson. So well done Dave, you got the, the right answer. So let's have a check now to see if it was film or digital. We're going to look at the EXIF data. So the answers were pretty much 50-50. Uh, Some people thinking it was film, others digital. But uh, it just goes to show that uh, seeing a picture online, it's difficult to tell whether it was a film or a, a digital capture. But at the end of the day, I always say that it's not about what you captured the picture with. It's all about the picture itself. And if you've got the image that you wanted, it doesn't matter what type of camera, be it film or digital, that you used. So let's take a look now. Was this film or was it digital? Here's the EXIF data. And as you can see, it was, uh, in fact, a digital capture. It was taken with a Canon 1D Mark II with a 70 to 200mm zoom. So thank you all for your answers. Uh, it's been good fun. And... Uh, Dave, if you can uh, contact me, probably best uh, through my contact page on my website. I'll leave a link in the description. I just need your address so I can get this uh, uh, frame print poster to you. And I'll probably post it after Christmas. So that's it, uh, the end of the video. Uh, it'll soon be the end of the year. And I might like to wish everybody a happy new year. And hope it's a, a better year than what we've had so far. <laughs> this year seems to be getting worse. And don't forget this uh, uh, Kozo Fine Art print is for sale for auction uh, on eBay. If you've liked the video, please give me a like, uh, subscribe to my channel. Uh, if you have any questions, just leave them below in the description and I'll get back to you. And uh, once again, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.